Hello, everyone, and welcome into the Shoujoverse. Today, I'm very excited because we have a very special episode for you. We're going to be playing Dungeons and Dragons, but make it Shoujo? Or is it Shoujo, but put it in Dungeons and Dragons? Either way, I'm here with Aza, Miso, and Nikki. Unfortunately, Samosa and Shochan couldn't make it today, and I'm very sad about it. But the rest of us are here, and we're ready. Um, so a few things before we start. I just want to put out a few disclaimers. First of all, it's Miso and Nikki's first time playing D and D, so th like first time ever. So they might we might be a little like uh, easy on the rules. Please no rules lawyers in the comments. It'll be okay. I'm it's, trying this is my be best. <laughs> yeah, we we might have asked some questions that like are dumb to like people who play D and D a lot, but <laughs> we're doing our best. Yeah, and this is for fun anyways. We are mostly here to have a good time and to make fun of sh shoujo, the genre we love to hate. The other thing is, this might seem to you D&D &D experts, if you're listening, this might seem really simple. But that's the thing about shoujo, is it's pretty simple. But we love it for that. Anyways, we're, um, let's go ahead and get introduced to our players. Aza, do you want to start? I shall. So I'm playing as Ojo Sama, first and last name. You might know that that translates to queen in Japanese, and that is for the very obvious reason that I will be playing as a, a classic shoujo villain, uh, villainess, I should say, who picks on bullies the female lead and eventually ends up ruined because she's a bitch. Um, she, just like I described, is very stereotypical, blonde hair in princess curls tied back with a bow, um, huge purple eyes, lots of makeup on. I mean, it doesn't look bad. It just, it just looks like too much. Um, she's wearing an very leather strappy adventure outfit which does reveal she has a very attractive figure um like a corset bustier type of thing not not very ideal looking for actual adventuring and combat but uh she is a noble so she has lots of money to spend on these very quality materials um, and over her shoulder, she's hefting a giant great axe that has a bow on it. Of course. And her, her boots have heels, for sure. Ridiculous heels. But she's a pro at fighting in them. Yeah. She's like Sailor Moon. Or Mars, I should say. Well, they both have heels. <laughs> <laughs> so there's Ojo Sama. Nice. How about Miso? <laughs> I'm Miso. I'm going to be playing as Miso. Very creative the name, I know. <laughs> Miso two E's though. <laughs> and she's a half elf and a bard. And bard that's like pretty much toned deaf. And she's also permanently dressed in a business formal with a suit jacket, dress shirt, tie, dress pants. And she's always carrying a briefcase as well. She has green hair tied into a ponytail, pale skin, and also she has unprescribed round glasses. And at school, <laughs> you'll always see her frantically trying to work overtime. But no one actually understands why, because she's like almost barely passing her classes anyways. <laughs> and her dream is to finally get a promotion working for the accounting firm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice yes. accounting. All right, Nikki, who's your character? Okay, everyone. Hi, I'm Nikki. I'm going to be playing as a dragonborn character. His name is Nate, but it is spelled N E I G A. H T Nate and he is so he's pretty well off you know he's a he's from a noble family right um but he is a you know he has his own insecurities he has a lot of insecurities like one thing is that his his skin is kind of like a, a very sunburnt pink right and so everyone thinks it's pink but it's actually red so he says because he um he has, possesses the powers of fire. It's light red. Light red. But it looks like it's pink. If you see, it. it's pink. <laughs> so we talk. Everyone says it's pink, um, but it's not. Um, 
I guess he kind of has something that looks a little like a bit of like a stubble going on or like little tiny little tiny spikes that are like on his chin um that he really wants to that he tells everyone that he's growing out but it's it's very small and it's been like that for about five months um even though he's pretty quick and agile he's quite soft both physically and emotionally um and he has this obsession with trying to prove his masculinity right in the very traditional sense of masculinity and sometimes that's annoying but he's still a pretty reliable person he's very charismatic among the local forest animals and he's pretty you know strong intelligent he's um, charismatic he wears the forest animals. <laughs> yeah local forest animals he um he wears a polo shirt that's a little bit too long for him and basketball shorts that go over his knee and some shoes old balance sneakers yeah yes I, yeah. I hope you all have wonderful mental yes. images of these characters he also wears um he also wears a relatively large looking cape thing right and um he thinks that it's like it's supposed to make him look a little cooler but it, it, he he stumbles on it sometimes <laughs> yes. is he like short for a dragon bard because dragon bard are pretty tall oh yeah he is um so he's uh he tells everyone he's six feet but he is actually five seven and a half <laughs> i am taller Rounding i'm up. taller than him in my heels <laughs> i'm so shorter than him <laughs> i'm shorter than him. i'm pretty short so <laughs> oh wait i am him <laughs> so there are our three characters um and now that you've been introduced to them why don't we go ahead and start and i'll introduce everyone to the world Let's you could it. say we're about to enter into the shoujo verse Ooh, Ooh. that was good that was really good <laughs> thank you Set in the idyllic landscape of Iporu is a beautiful castle that is home to Amusria Academy for Adventurers, a place where students live and study. Here you can learn how to properly be a paladin who protects the weak from extraplanar threats, a wizard with a spell book bursting at the seams with spells of all schools of magic, a druid who becomes the sworn protector of a sacred forest, or much, much more! The possibilities are endless here at Amusria. But as with any school, not everything is perfect here. There are cliques, fights between rival clans, bullying of the lower economic classes, and general pettiness. At the same time, strong bonds have been made as friendships form during late nights, cramming for tests or slaving over group projects. Friendships like yours would have never come to be without Amusria. Your friendship is well known here, not only because you're almost always seen together, but because you're also some of the top students in your classes despite what some of you said during your introductions. <laughs> Shochan's intelligence and drive for peace, Ojo's perfectly contained rage, Miso the natural scam, Nate's ability to outmaneuver, and Talabia the wild shaping prodigy. The five of you have made a bit of a name for yourselves here at Amusia. And that's how almost all of you ended up in Headmaster Accordia's office one fateful afternoon. Well, minus your friend Talapia Oreochromas, who is currently off on an on an off campus journey, meditating in different environments trying to find inner fish. <laughs> I mean inner peace. Shochan, unfortunately, was exposed to someone who may have a dangerous and highly transmissible, transmissible virus, so she's quarantining and won't be able to help today. Um, but the three of you, the three of you make it to uh, Headmaster Accordia's office. You have never been in Headmaster Accordia's office before. It's beautiful here with wide windows that overlook the forest that surrounds the castle. You can see mountain peaks in the distance. Students sitting on the deck of the lake nearby look as small as ants from up here. Headmaster Accordia stands from their office to address you. They were dragonborn with rich bronze scales that reflect the sunlight in an entrancing way. They wear deep green academic robes and little, gra and little glasses perched on their nose. Welcome, you three. I'm sure you've heard of the disappearance of a number of our students. That is indeed why you've been summoned here today. It's escalated to the point where a professor is even missing now. I've heard from your teachers that you're promising. As you know, whenever something goes amiss here, I'd like to give promising students the chance to solve our problem before involving outside help. Do you all think you can find out what happened to these students and, if possible, bring them back? Leave it to me, Headmaster. I am capable of anything. 
and with my two friends, we will certainly solve the problem. Well, I admire your confidence. I'm not sure if I could fit it in my schedule. Kind of busy, you know, a lot of overtime. Not sure about that one. <laughs> Don't worry, I have already arranged that you can miss classes for the day. This is an official endeavor. I mean, I guess I can do it if if I'm going to have to save all these like lame men. I'm better than them, so we can probably get it done. Uh, I mean, I guess if I could maybe get a promotion, uh, I'll do it. <laughs> yes, good point, Miso. What are the rewards for finding the missing students? Well, you will all get extra credit for your classes. And if you succeed, you will not be considered an embarrassment. How about that? Uh, as if I, I could ever be credit, considered but... an embarrassment. Definitely need that extra credit. I really want that promotion now. <laughs> I don't well. need extra credit, but um, guess if people start worshipping me, I mean, it wouldn't be so bad. Yes, they should. I mean, um, uh, yes. Uh, anyway, what's uh? Do you have any leads, professor or headmaster? Well, that is for you to find. I expect you to find the answer within, let's say, two days. Oh, and before you go, if you find that there is perhaps one or multiple individuals related to this, please. Do not kill them. <laughs> you are dismissed. Kill them. So I'll head out of the office first uh, with my haughty strut and pause in the hallway waiting for Miso and Nate. I will scramble out there <laughs> to meet you. I guess I will also... I'm just gonna walk out there. <laughs> You're like, I have no distinctive walk. I don't have one. <laughs> I'm just constantly frantic, you know? I'm gonna uh, approach Muso and, like, kind of um, concernedly, like, brush your hair out of your face a little bit and be like, Dearest Miso, you're not getting enough sleep, are you? I see these bags under your eyes. Stress, acne. Really, uh, one night you must come to my room and I can show you my beauty regimen for keeping my skin flawless. And with that, I flip my hair. <laughs> it's like it's, you can almost see the sparkles in her flawless skin, but <laughs> you can't really see them because it's also covered in powder and makeup. Oh, you see like a little powder float away <laughs> <laughs> when she puts her hair. After I've touched oh. my face and then I touch you, there's like a little powder spot. <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously, I'm, I'm, rub, I'm going to have to rub off that powder a little bit. Um, thank you, Ojo. But I really need to get all that overtime, you know? Gotta work on all those uh, files. What? You're rubbing off. <laughs> what are you You rubbing off to... a bit of the powder? Yeah. I said, you rubbing off a bit of the powder got on me, and I'm frantically pushing it off because there's no way makeup could be on my body. <laughs> I, and then um... while I'm doing that, I trip over my cape. <laughs> now I'm on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> I, I frantically like go to help you up um, with a lot of concern on my face. I'm like, oh, Nitsama, are you all right? I push you away because there's no way I'm gonna let a princess help me up. I can get I'm up by princess. myself. A princessy <laughs> person, sorry. I mean, I'm I'm flattered that you go. that you think of me that way. <laughs> and she blushes a little bit. Well, there's no way I'm gonna let some girl help me up. I mean, oh, it's and not like I, I got wanted some to. powder again on my. I got more powder again on my 
arms. Oh no! Why do you oh even God. have all this makeup not on this you? There's this much powder on my face. <laughs> Why is she like the from like those people from the eighteen hundreds, like a million powder on her face? <laughs> you girls and your makeup and your pretty pretty princess getting ready. You take hours to get ready too. Are you guys ready or not to finally go on this adventure? Yes, I suppose we better get started. Well, but we don't have any clues. <laughs> or I think first, uh, first of all, we'll need to. Figure out who's gone missing. Maybe we, Maybe we should split people. up. <laughs> uh, that's the first thing you're going to do, is split up? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that one, Ojo. Um, I'm not really comfortable splitting up. Yeah, it doesn't seem like she's comfortable going alone. I think you guys should also go with a manly man like me. Of course. Uh, we'll, we'll let you lead the way. I mean, I, no, I, of course, will lead the way as the natural leader of the party. Come with me, and I'm just going to take off down the hall. I'm just going <coughs> to trot after you. <laughs> Wait up, Ojo, you're going too fast. You're not going to be, you think you're faster than me? Well, think <laughs> again. And I just storm off after. And now you have three people racing against each other. All right, so what are your, where are you going what are you looking for? Um, probably to the, I don't know, is there like a teacher's lounge? I'm going to command my squirrels to go into the They're... trees. <laughs> <laughs> I can't We're command my up. squirrels. I'm, I'm not letting you split up. No. Well, <laughs> I'm going to let my squirrels go look for me while I go with everyone else. Are you a druid? I don't know. Don't I have like... I think I have some ability to, um... You, you are animals. proficient in animal handling. Yeah, yeah, I'm proficient in animal handling. Do you have, like, talk to small animals? I'm proficient no. in animal handling. Oh, but, okay. So uh, animal handling doesn't mean you can command squirrels, but okay. <laughs> what does it, it mean, can, like, then? Maybe if you it, roll a nat 20. It means you can, like... It means squirrels can, like, come up to you and are, like, chill with that. It means you could, like, pet a squirrel and it wouldn't bite you, probably. Or if, like, you were trying to ride a horse, you could do it well. So my <laughs> squirrels can't do things for me? I mean, no. I love the idea that you think you can command squirrels. <laughs> we can That's what I that. thought proficient in animal handling meant. No, it's like... There so... are abilities in the game that will specifically let you talk to squirrels. Yeah, uh, yeah, any yeah. animal, actually. Alright, fine. I don't command my squirrels. Think of it as, like, um, you can also be proficient in, like, investigation. So that just means, like, you're better at noticing things, maybe, than the average person. But it doesn't give you, like, superpowers. <laughs> mm. That's Wait, so she, So she can't command <laughs> squirrels. I mean, like I said, you can think that you can. <laughs> If that's what you want. If you want to try and command them. <laughs> yeah. You can always try. Do I have to you roll know? if I... Do I have to roll or something if I try to command them? Yes, you will yeah, have you to would, roll. Yeah, you would roll animal handling. Oh, uh, no. Yeah. So if you want to go outside and go try to find some squirrels and try to command them to investigate, you can do that. All right. We're going to do that. All right, go ahead and roll a d20 and add your animal handling modifier. Okay, oh, we will we will follow Nate. Nate takes you outside. As All Nate right. is doing this, I'm like standing off to the side and I'm like having a, a moment where I'm just like watching Nate with kind of like dreamy eyes and like biting my lip like, oh, look at how he commands those squirrels. But this is like all in my head. And I'm just staring at you. Um, I'm trying to disgust. figure out what my. <laughs> I'm trying to find out what my animal handling modifier is. Okay, if you look on the skills in like the middle, it should be the second one down. It's in alphabetical order. Skills in. Skills in the middle. Like it, not in like the right side where you have all the different tabs, but like 
So it like the first one is acrobatics and then animal handling and then arcana. It's a long list. It's got all the plus all two. The, plus, plus two, two. You're right. So roll your die and add two plus roll your D twenty and add plus two. What do I have to roll? Oh wait, you don't know yet, right? Okay. Okay. So you all follow Nate as he has this brilliant idea. I will command the squirrels to help us search. So he goes and he goes to the forest and he goes pss, 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 pss. and he gets out some nuts, which I assume he has for squirrel talking because he can command squirrels. He knows this. And tosses some nuts and a squirrel approaches. What do you say to it? Squirrel, can you please go and find us some clues? For these missing students. The squirrel eats the nut. And then hops away. See? He's going to go find some clues for us. Very, okay. very impressive, Nate. I mean, I could have done that. Okay, so what are we going to do in the meantime? <laughs> I've just realized the people listening didn't know what you rolled. You got a seven. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, we gotta say our rolls so people know. Oh, whoops. I got a seven. <laughs> <laughs> so, now that the squirrels are definitely on on the mission, what are you guys doing? Um, Once again, is there a teacher's lounge of some sort? There is indeed a teacher's lounge. It's on the second floor. Okay. I will suggest that we go to the teacher's lounge. Start there to investigate. Okay. All right. <laughs> so okay. Follow you to the teacher's lounge. Yeah, I okay. guess so. Okay, I guess that's where I'm we like, can present our business proposal to them. Oh my god. I'm like <laughs> pulling Miso along, like to the point where you're like dropping all of your papers and reports, and I don't care. I'm just like I'm, I'm not ready for this me. business proposal. We haven't prepared the PowerPoint or the slides yet. <laughs> what is a slide? We have to prepare the Google slide, the PowerPoint slide. Come on. Gotta have the figures, the charts. We're such a mess. What are these things you're always talking about? And I like playfully like slap you back and forth. Just like, get it in your head. We are in a fantasy world. There's no such thing as Google. <laughs> it's called Goggle, actually. <laughs> Uh, okay, anyways, Google, you make it to goggle, the... <laughs> whatever. <laughs> you make it to the teacher's lounge. And in there you find there is just one teacher there right now, a dwarf woman. She's got uh, red hair down in like four braids down the back of her head. And she's got big old fluffy mutton chops and she's uh, currently smoking out the window. And I would hey. know her as Professor... Professor Bronze Force. Uh, hello, Professor Bronzeforce. Greetings. Um, hey. You may have known that we have been granted the most prestigious task of uh, determining where the students who have recently gone missing and teacher uh, have gotten to. The headmaster has charged us with this duty. So let me ask you, Professor, if there's Anything that comes to mind that's strange to you about recently? Or or do you know anyone who's gone missing? Yeah, I do know. <clears throat> Professor Respect is missing. Oh, I, I, I... That was such a weird name that I was like... Like, you were telling me that Respect was missing. Like, I wasn't being respectful. <laughs> Uh, no, no. Professor... Pro Professor Respect, he teaches uh, herbs and plants. Oh yes, of course, I wouldn't know about such a uh, useless <laughs> field of study. Uh, Professor Respect. You just see me and like, when practically did he go scribbling. <laughs> Writing down all the notes. Do you get where you're smoking from Professor Respect? Yeah, actually. No. Nice. Does it smell like weed? What does it smell like? <laughs> make a make a nature check. <laughs> oh, I probably don't know what it smells like. Uh, eight. Uh, no, you don't know. 
Does it smell bad or good? Um, to you, it probably smells bad. Okay. Ugh. Disgusting, stinky thing. Right I'm back at you. prim and like holding my... Uh, how dare you! <laughs> I want whatever she's having. Do, do you have any more information about who else is missing? This R&D p- department is just not that great. <laughs> what? Um... Yeah, one of the one of the other students um is Calorall. He's missing. He's he's one of mine. You know, the half work. Does he smell as bad as you? I don't know. I don't smell my students. Well, maybe if we a find point. a similar smell or if we ever come across a similar smell, we might be able to find this professor since since uh, Bron- Bronze Force gets whatever she's smoking from him. Maybe I'm that holding, could be By a clue. this point, I'm like holding my nose with my head stuck up in the air. <coughs> or pinching my nose. And I'm like... <coughs> I'm coughing all over the place, mm-hmm. apparently. Um, Bronze Force, like, when, did you, uh, when did you last see this professor? Respect. Yesterday. He went missing at some point between, I don't know, noon yesterday. Hmm. This morning. Where where, where did you last see him? Oh, outside. He was out in his classroom. It hasn't been that long. Could it be that he isn't actually missing? No, I'm pretty sure he's missing. He didn't show up for class. He's always at class. When did your student go missing? Uh, like three days ago. Three days ago. Hmm. Do you happen to know anyone else that we can get information from? You're... You gotta talk to other people. I don't know. I don't know everything. I'm not gonna give you all the answers. He's clearly too high to be able to answer us mm-hmm. in a more useful way. Neat. Why don't you check up on the squirrels? She, she's, uh, she, the the expression she just gave you was one of um. Uh, I'll describe it as, um, uh, like disgust and confusion. Yes, yes, that's the the appropriate face to make about yourself. It seems like you understand how lowly you are. Did you notice anything strange in their behavior before they disappeared? Nah. He just gave me the goods and I gave him the money. I think we're just wasting (laughs) our time here. (laughs) Yes, you've been ever so helpful. Let's, uh, let's move on. I can't bear this disgusting odor any longer. See you later, Bronze Force. Good day. Nate trips on I his it's... cape on the way out. <laughs> Again? <laughs> right, as yeah. I, right as I think Nate's so cool for like, um, so casually referring to the teacher and then he trips. And I'm just so disappointed. <laughs> hey, where should we go where, next? Where are you? Um, well, I don't know. I chose the teacher's lounge. Maybe we can go to where... Professor Respect disappeared, or was last seen. His classroom? Yeah. Maybe we can find something there. All right, to the classroom. Ah. Yes, good idea, Misa. Thank you all for listening to the first episode of our mini D&D series. I hope you're enjoying it so far. Next week, we'll be back to a regular shoujo episode where we answer the question, Are Girls Ruining Anime? And in two weeks, we'll find out what Ojo-sama, Nate, and Miso find in Professor Respect's classroom. In the meantime, you can follow us on social media for more shoujo-related content. You can find all our links on shoujoverse.card.co. And at the time of posting, which is October 25th, 2021, we have one week left in our giveaway. We're giving away one of MXTX's Danmei works on Twitter. All you have to do is follow us and retweet the giveaway tweet by October 30th to enter. 
Good luck to all who are entering, and thank you again for listening. I hope you have an amazing day.